Code Native is becoming increasingly important for CSPs and at the ONS Europe event in Antwerp I sat down with Dan Cohen, Executive Director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation to discuss how telcos can benefit from a move towards containers and Kubernetes. CNCF is almost four years old now. We're part of the Linux Foundation, like uh, Linux Foundation Networking, which is our sister organization. We've had a pretty amazing four years, though. We started uh, with just 28 members and two of the biggest 10 public clouds, and we're now closing in on 500 members, which will actually make us the largest open source foundation ever and uh, we have all of the biggest public clouds, all of the biggest enterprise software companies, a pretty amazing list of over 100 end users uh, representing biggest, really all uh, every industry, uh, most companies you've heard of and tons of apps on your phone are all using CNCF technologies and particularly Kubernetes. So when we started four years ago, cloud native was not a very well-known term. Uh, Kubernetes was one of many orchestrators and it was a little unclear where, how much penetration it was going to gain. And now it's really the default, de facto way of uh, running most workloads in the cloud. We have a shorthand for cloud native to say it has three parts to it. One is a containerization that you uh, divide up your workload and you wrap it with uh, all the dependencies that it needs, but try and make it as small as possible. Two is microservices, which is that as you do that, you can divide your application up into different parts and have each of those developed by separate teams running at their own velocity. And then when you have a bunch of containerized microservices, you tend to need a central orchestration function that can help organize and run those for you. And so uh, that's a pattern that essentially every big technology company has developed uh, separately over the last 15 years. So uh, huge Chinese companies like Baidu and Alibaba and Google, Yahoo, really everyone, uh, Amazon, has worked out their own ways of doing this. Now with Kubernetes, they're really collaborating together and creating what you can think of as an operating system for the cloud and saying, let's have a similar skill set and way of defining things and, and uh, kind of universal API. And then uh, everybody collaborates on that lower layer, but still competes on the services and applications on top. Well, conveniently, it's like peanut butter and chocolate. You don't have to choose. that. You, you can work on both of them together. And the reality is that telecoms is not known as necessarily being the bleeding edge industry. It tends to be uh, a little bit further behind. And so as Kubernetes and cloud native has taken over cloud computing and enterprise software, a lot of, really all the telcos have said, hey, we would like to move our development velocity from doing quarterly updates or monthly updates to getting to weekly or daily or what most enterprises do, which is dozens of times per day being able to make changes and deploy that into production. And so uh, I've really enjoyed, uh, CNCF has collaborated closely with Linux Foundation Networking and RPIT and I see very much eye to eye on these things that we are looking at how to bring Kubernetes and the whole telecoms industry to the, to the cloud native world, but it uh, necessarily is going to be a little bit slower than a startup can do. We're thrilled that Vodafone just joined as a member of CNCF and Verizon. We've had AT&T since the beginning, uh, and we have a number of others that are in the pipeline. We have um, a new telecom user group, or TUG, that we launched uh, earlier this year that is uh, collaborating together and trying to create um, several patterns, white papers, discussions about best practices. And then we have um, a platform that we've built out called the Cloud Native Network Function, or CNF Testbed. And uh, this is trying to push back on a traditional telecom practice where every telco would have their own lab and uh, you would ship a box to them and it's sort of like the Roche Motel where boxes go in but they never come out and uh, many, many startups and established company product lines went there to die. Uh, but understandably, the telcos have very high standards. It's just very hard to know when something's not working correctly. Is it not configured correctly? Is there some issue with it? And so we have a different model based on the fact that Kubernetes has a continuous integration platform that runs 10,000 CI jobs every day. Every two days, uh, we run five, a scalability test of 5,000 nodes and compare those results to previous ones. And all of that is open source. So we built out this CNF testbed and said, 
okay, here's a way of running your own network functions on a Kubernetes platform, looking at the positives and negatives of that, but uh, you don't, you can actually share the results because the entire platform is open source, available Apache 2.0, checked into GitHub, and we're very eager to have pull requests, that if you think there's things about how we've configured it that are suboptimal, we would love to hear that back and see alternative and better ways of running it. In order to take advantage of cloud native, you needed a greenfield deployment, it would be an absolute non-starter. But that's true for enterprises as well. I mean, it's a trillion dollar, uh, the whole global economy is $10 trillion, and you don't, uh, all of that essentially is running through legacy software. And so the reason that Kubernetes has been so successful is because there's <clears throat> a process of taking your existing applications, containerizing them, moving them into the cloud native world, and then chipping away at those monoliths to eventually evolve them into microservices. And that model can work for telcos as well. In fact, I would argue that they're already somewhat down that path on having moved from physical network functions, PNFs, to virtual network functions, VNFs, but they've made all these investments and haven't necessarily gotten the benefit that they wanted, where the interoperability isn't always there, the f higher velocity, the better resiliency. Our hope is that they can continue down that path from VNF to CNF and actually get a lot of the things that they've been promised over the last decade. CNCF has these two documents, uh, the trail map, uh, you can see it at l.cncf.io, and then this kind of crazy document called the landscape, where we're tracking uh, several hundred different projects and products. And it's overwhelming, and we actually get some criticism uh, for it, uh, of saying, oh, why can't you make it simple? But of course, it's like blaming the map maker uh, when the trail is rocky. But uh, I will say that a, a big role that vendors in our ecosystem play is that many of them look at the different components that CNCF hosts or that alternative organizations host or that are just out there as open source projects uh, not owned by anyone, and they pick and choose components in order to build that platform. So we don't see CNCF's job as to define a single platform. We are um, hosting a set of projects that we do want to have work well together. We certainly think there's a big advantage to choosing CNCF hosted projects because we do have some additional interoperability guarantees, but each vendor can put together a platform and then it is ultimately up to each telco to decide which of those different piece parts they want to work with. Kubernetes is our largest project by far and so it kind of has a gravitational force that does help the other projects make sure that they maintain compatibility with it. But I would give a, a quick shout out to Prometheus, which is the monitoring platform that's becoming just a standard way of monitoring almost any kind of uh, computer component, component, server component. And then Envoy, which is a service proxy for connecting uh, clusters and also virtual machines to the internet. But we're, we're actually up to, uh, I believe, 24 uh, graduated and incubating projects, and then another uh, 17 or so in the sandbox. So uh, there is a, just a ton of engagement and development, and my big message is we would love for the telecom operators to get involved, that uh, they, very, they are very welcome in the cloud-native ecosystem.